So tonight, I said, we haven't gone over business structure in a while. So let's go over business structure. You, you coming up here, Rexy? What you doing? So when we're talking about your business structure, your corporate structure, I'll be using the word LLC, but LLC, corporation, whatever, whichever is your entity of choice is fine. Okay, come on. You gonna be you gonna behave? Here's Rexy, y'all. So when it comes to your business structure, this is going to be the most important part of your business. Why? Your business structure is what's protecting you. It's protecting you, it's protecting your assets, it's protecting your home, it's protecting the money in the bank. Your business structure is gonna be the foundation of your business, okay? So this has to be on point. We can't, we can't cut any corners, we can't, well, maybe, we just need to have this together, okay? So starting off, we may say, and I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning this because I just saw a person on Instagram saying, you know, to wait <laughs> to form your LLC until you start making money in your business. And so let me tell you why you don't want to do that and why it's so important to form your LLC as soon as you think of a business idea. Well, this is you, right? You have... Um, a house, you have a car, you have money in the bank. When you don't form an LLC, when you just start doing business as a DBA, a DBA is don't be asked out, right? You're now doing business exposing your house, your car, your home. If something were to happen in the business and you will get sued, you will lose your house, your car, or your home, or whatever assets you have. We don't want this. Okay, I am doing a free masterclass this Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern time. I'm breaking this whole business structure thing down. If you want the link to join, if you're on my Instagram page, type in bank in the comments. If you're on my TikTok page, click the link in the bio. Anywho, so the reason why you form your LLC with your, um, Rexy, with your business not making a dime is not for the business, it's for you. So when you form your LLC, what you do is you separate the business from you. So here's you with your assets, here's your business. So, wrong way. I say I'm going to have a lash company. Before I form my LLC, I'm going to just do my business and see if it makes some money. I put too much glue on the girl's eye. It makes her contact get stuck on her eye and she turns blind. Baby, I'm not making that, that analogy up that really happened uh, in a lawsuit. So now she's blind. I get sued for a million dollars. Because I was a DBA, my house, my money in the bank, my assets, my real estate will be seized just because I'm doing business as a DBA. A DBA is just you doing business in a nickname, you personally. We don't want that. Same scenario. I form my LLC on this time, and so too much glue on the eye, girl went blind, she sues me. She can only get what the LLC has. She can't touch my personal assets, okay? So this is the number one reason why we are forming our LLC the second we think of this idea, to separate us from the business. As long as you are tied to the business, meaning there's no separate entity, it's just you. A DBA is not an entity. A sole proprietor is not an entity. A partnership is not an entity. It's not a separate entity. It's, those are just different names for just you, okay? As long as you are doing business, then you are exposing your assets to business creditors, and we don't want that. The second mistake people make is we're going to form our LLC, right? So I form my LLC. So here is, hmm, I will be Joy's, what's cute? I'm going to be Joy's Boutique, okay? I have Joy's Boutique. And so um, Joy's Boutique is a popular boutique. I have, I have maybe, let's say I, I own the real estate for my store 
and I have a lot of cash flow coming in. So a lot of money in the bank. The Joy's Boutique is paying all my bills. And then I say, well, I want to do lashes, but I'm going to just get a DBA and just put the lashes underneath the LLC in my DBA. What you think you're doing is if I get a DBA, I'm putting it underneath my LLC. That's not what you're really doing. You're really just adding it to the original LLC. So when you're starting a second business, if we don't form a whole new entity, we're kind of making one big pot of gumbo, a hot mess, okay? We don't want that. So same scenario. I'm doing lashes. I'm not good. I put too much glue on the girl's eye. She turns blind. She sues me. She's not going to get just what Joy's lashes has. She's also going to touch the assets of Joy's online boutique. Why? Because I put all the entities in one LLC. So the second you say, you know, maybe God told you you won't have an enterprise, right? He said you're going to have multiple businesses. Well, come on, Jesus. The second that you think I'm about to do something else, that's a separate LLC. We're not combining any businesses. We're not combining them for asset protection reasons. If my online boutique is paying all my bills and I merge another business in there and that business goes haywire, we're now exposing that other business to the assets of my business. So if I do it this way with Joy's Lashes, get sued, they take the money out of my bank and my, and my, and my, uh, and my real estate, now I got to start all the way over from square one. We don't want that. Why? Joy's Boutique was paying my bills, it's paying my mortgage, paying my car note, paying for my kids' private school. If I don't have that income, how do I pay my bills? Let me get my monkeys. Let me get my monkeys. If I can't pay my bills, here come the monkeys. The monkeys equal stress. You ever heard the term, you got the monkey on your neck? Now that monkey's on your neck. Now you are late on car payments. Now you're not able to pay your mortgage. Now your kids come out of private school. Now you and the spouse arguing. Now you're not having sex. Now you have divorce court and bankruptcy court. Why? All because you did not want to form a separate LLC. All because your CPA said, oh, you don't have to do it just to, just to get a DBA. All because you're trying to save $500. Is your marriage worth more than $500? Is your kid's happiness worth more than $500? Is being able to sleep at night peacefully worth the $500 it's going to cost you to form your LLC? The answer is yes. Now, when you come out here in these business streets, we can't come out here tiptoeing. We can't come out here shucking and jiving. We can't come out here playing because it's grimy in these business streets. Eat or get eaten, kill or get killed, okay? So we can't come out here do -si doing, acting like boom, boom, boom. No, you have to come out here equipped, ready for war. That's why I'm saying your business structure is the most important part of your business. More than marketing, more than funding, more than advertising, more than equipment, more than all that stuff. If your, if your business structure is wrong, it's all going to come down. If you go build a house on a faulty foundation and a hurricane comes, it's coming down. If you build your house on a faulty foundation and an earthquake comes, the whole thing's coming down. That furniture mixed up. The lighting is messed up. The plumbing is gone. The fixture is gone. Everything is coming down with a bang. This is why we, we have to separate everything. I'm going to be going into detail about all of this business structure stuff in my free masterclass this Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. If you wanted to join my free masterclass, if you're on my Instagram page, comment bank in the comments and a link will be sent to you. If you're on my TikTok page, click the first link in my bio. Now, the benefit of forming your businesses with multiple LLCs will be this. If I have, what is this? Joy's Online Boutique. And I have Joy's Lashes, besides protecting my assets, I now have two LLCs that can walk into the bank and get a line of credit. 
I now have two LLCs that can walk into the bank and get some vehicle financing for a company car. I now have two LLCs that can walk into the bank and get a loan. I now have two LLCs that can apply for business grants. So the more you protect yourself and the more you run your business like a business, like it's Walmart, like it's Sam's Club, the more benefits you get in being a real business owner, okay? So besides protecting your assets, besides, besides minimizing your loss or minimize, in case of, if a lawsuit happens, I'm minimizing my risk. There's no way to bulletproof everything. If I get sued, they get nothing. That's impossible. You're in business. What we're trying to do is mitigate that loss. Let me lose the least amount as possible. So besides asset protection as to why we want to separate our entities, we also will now be able to get additional funding, right? So instead of just one company walking in, now I got two. Now I've doubled the amount of funding I can get. I've doubled my economic resources to start, grow, or scale my business all because I came into these business streets prepared, okay? So this is why we form our LLC. We're not waiting and to see if, uh, if, if, if it's a hit, we're not waiting to see if we're going to make profits. We aren't waiting because we aren't going to be exposing ourselves. Now, the third reason why you don't want to wait to form your LLC to see if it hits is something called goodwill. Meaning a business name or a business logo will develop goodwill. What is goodwill? When someone hears the name or sees your logo, it means something. If you are driving down the street on a country road and you are starving, right? And you have a choice of Arby's or Bubba's, uh, Bubba's Barbecue, where are you going to stop? Arby's or Bubba's Barbecue? Nine out of 10 times, you may not be an Arby's fan, but you've at least heard of Arby's. You've never heard of Bubba's Barbecue. That name means something. If I were to win the Golden Arches of McDonald's and I built a building that was similar to McDonald's and I put the Golden Arch sign in front of my building without having the word McDonald's, how many people would drive into my business thinking it was McDonald's? That is goodwill. If you wait <clears throat> until your business hits, if you wait until you realize it's profitable to then form your LLC, Here's the third problem you're going to run into. Someone already has your name. I farm LLCs all day, every day, and every single week. Baby, who put McDowell's? I'm dead. Nika, you are hilarious. Every single week, I'm having to email a client saying, hey, your name is taken. We don't want to wait. Why do we not want to wait? Because once you start building your brand, you're building you're going to be doing marketing. You're going to be advertising. You're going to start developing goodwill around your name. If I am Joy's Peach Cobbler, I got the best peach cobbler in town. Everyone loves my desserts, okay? Everyone knows me as Joy's Peach Cobbler. I get branded marketing. I get branded um, paper. What, what is it coming? I get branded containers. And every I, 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 I wrap my, my building with all my logos. And I'm known as Joy's Peach Cobbler. Well, it takes me three years to actually get, you know, hit and make a name for myself. And then I'm going, okay, well, I'm making a name for myself. This business really works. Let me go for my LLC. Oh, sorry. Joyce Peach Cobbler is taken. So now I got to change my name. J&J &J Cobbler. Now I got to change all my branding, all my marketing, all my packaging. I got to redo all the stuff in my, in my brick and mortar. Now, if I may be on a food truck or trying to advertise my stuff as J&J &J Peach Cobbler, well, nobody knows J&J &J Peach Cobbler. So they aren't studying J&J &J because they're looking for Joy's Peach Cobbler. Now you got to start all the way over and now you're going to be losing clients. Why? All because you wanted to wait to form your LLC. The second you form that LLC, you're going to reserve the name of your business in the state that you form your LLC in. So if I form Joy's Peach Cobbler in Florida, that means nobody else can use Joy's Peach Cobbler in Florida. 
Now, if I want no one else to use Joy's Peace Cobbler in the U.S. of A, I need to file a trademark. A trademark will make sure that no one else in the U.S. of A can use my name. But I want to first form the LLC in my state to reserve the name that I'm doing business in. Okay, so those are going to be the top three reasons why you want to form your LLC the second you think you're about to do business. Now, let's just say I form, I'm thinking about doing Joy's Monkey Bit. I'm going to sell my monkey. My monkeys are so popular because I'm telling people you do not want the monkey on their neck that people want to buy this monkey. So I go and start Joy's Monkey Business, right? Um, well, maybe I'm starting it and I formed the LLC. I did everything that Joy said to do, but the monkeys really weren't a hit. You know, nobody really, really wanted to buy the monkey. So I, the, the business didn't pan out. But did I lose that LLC? No, you didn't. You can just amend the LLC name. So you know what? I started Joy's Monkey Business. Nobody really liked Joy's Monkey. So now I'm going to do Joy's Sweaters. So I'm going to amend my LLC, meaning you're going to file an amendment with the Secretary of State and just change your business name. I'm going to change it from Joy's Monkeys to Joy's Sweater. So I still have my LLC. I will then, of course, get a new EIN since it's a new business, but my LLC age will be from the time I formed Joy's Monkey. I'm not forming a brand new entity. So when it comes to applying for loans, for lines of credit, for vehicles, I can still keep the age. So if Joy's Monkeys is two years old and now I'm changing the name, I still keep that corporate age and I would just get a new EIN number. Okay, so that's another benefit of forming your LLC. The second is you can always use that LLC, right? Or maybe you've acquired assets somewhere else. You can use that LLC as a holding company. I always tell people, baby, just hold on to an LLC. If you're not using it, just hold on to it. File your annual report, pay your fee, but just keep the LLC. It's an entity. You never know what's going to happen. You never know when you're going to acquire assets. You need an LLC. You never know when a business opportunity is going to come. But hey, you now, now you have an aged corporation, right? So eventually, after you get maybe three, four years on it, you'll be able to sell that LLC if you don't want to use it. An LLC or a corporation, it's an asset. It's a business entity. We don't want to just terminate it, dissolve it. Well, I'm not using it. Or you you just let it go by not paying the fee. If you pay that fee. You never know when you're going to need an LLC. And you can always use an LLC for something. You can just build business credit and get um get some, you know, get some funding on the LLC just based on the entity itself. Okay? So I think I gave three or four reasons. Those are going to be my top three or four reasons about why we need to form our LLC the second we're thinking about doing the business idea. If any of this made sense to you or you want to learn more about this, I am doing a free um, uh, masterclass Monday at 9 p.m. on business structure, asset protection, how to get funding for your business that is not based on your credit, but more importantly, how to market your business, right? So we got our structure down. We have our assets protected. Um, now it's time to get to get the clients to our website, to get the clients to our door, to get the clients to our business, okay? So I'll leave with one marketing tip. We cannot just start a business and then just sit and wait. <laughs> what are we waiting on, baby? We have to go to where your client is and bring them to the business. Well, how do I go bring someone to my business? You sell the pain or the problem that you solve. You are the solution. You have to let people know what the problem is. You are the solution. So nine out of 10 times, if you've stumbled upon my page, you may have realized, oh my gosh, I shouldn't do business in a DBA. Oh my gosh, I should have more than one LLC. Oh my gosh, I didn't know that my home address shouldn't be on my... I'm, I'm telling you all the problems. I'm having the solution, okay? So when it comes to marketing your product, what are you selling and who is your target audience? 
Well, I want to sell to everybody. You can't sell to everybody. Why? You can only market to your target audience. Chanel. Chanel is a luxury brand. You're gonna if you want a bag from Chanel, you're gonna spend seven or ten thousand dollars at minimum to get a bag from Chanel. Okay, they are girls are gonna pay ten thousand dollars for a bag. So when I go out to Sunday Fun Day, everybody doesn't have my bag. Now, if Chanel does for Valentine's Day a buy one get one free sale, is does is is that gonna increase Chanel's value? Is that going to bring more of her audience there or is that going to decrease the value? It's going to decrease the value because Chanel's customer is buying the bag only because everybody's not going to be there. Chanel needs to, Chanel's target audience isn't looking for a sale. Chanel's target audience isn't even worried about the price of the bag. I have to go to where Chanel's audience is. So where would I advertise if I had a high-end brand like Chanel? Maybe at the country club, that's where the client is. Maybe at a med spa, that's where my client will be. Maybe at the yacht club or the polo club, that's where my client will be. I'm putting my advertisements at where my target audience is to bring them in. If Chanel went and to put an ad out at, you know, at all the elementary schools in the world, is that going to really bring, at all the public elementary schools in the world, is that going to bring in a, bring in a great, is that going to give them a good return on their investment? No. You have to go where your client is. When I first started my law practice back in 2005, I'm old, right? Entrepreneurship, asset protection, all this stuff. I came from a, I came from a tax and asset protection law firm doing all this, flying around the US of A to big corporations, telling them, you got to have more LLCs. You got to have a holding company. No, 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 no. When I got out to practice law, baby, everyone was, no one was, nobody was doing entrepreneurship in 2005. Everybody had that six-figure job. So I ended up doing a lot of criminal law. So where are the criminals hanging out? How do I, how do I let the criminal knows know, hey, I'm here. I need to be your attorney. Where do criminals hang out? So two to three nights a week, I will be at the club. Why? Well, where are your DUIs going to be? Where are your assaults going to be? Where are all these things going to be? The nine out of 10 times are going to happen after the club. So I will go to the club two, three nights a week in my suit. If you stop me, you ask my number, but here's my card. If you need an attorney, give me a call. Over time, with them seeing me at the club, when they would get the DUI, oh my gosh, I, I, I remember you, I had you, no, 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 bam, there's my audience. They're at the club. Now, I'm like, well, how do I get someone to pay me $20,000 retainer? How do I get the client who is not, you know, using grandma's SSI and having to save up to pay me? Where is the person that has $20,000 to pay me? Where are they at? They're at the strip club. What's going on at the strip club? Uh, possession with the intent to distribute, prostitution, and a whole lot of things. So what do I do? I put my best suit on. I go up to the strip club. Hi, I love your establishment. How much would you charge me to put my poster on the bathroom stalls of the men's and the women's bathroom? Why? My target audience is at the strip club. So I put my advertisement at the strip club. Now, how do I market to my client? Now, I happen to be cute, right? And the stereotype for someone who's cute is that they're dumb. So if I have a person who's looking at 20 or 30 years in prison, they don't want the cute girl. They want the old man or the smart person. And cute people are just perceived to be dumb. So I went and got a, law, uh, a fellow attorney who was older, who has some gray on him. Hey, let's come do a photo shoot. And can, can we partner together on, on, my, on my big criminal cases? Perfect. So me and a nice old man with gray hair, back to back, take a picture. And I put that picture on the strip club doors. You got prostitution, I got you. You got possession, I, I got you. So as, there, as my target audience is going in the bathroom night after night, week after week, they're, they're calling me, why? I put myself in a way that they could receive me 
at my where my target audience is. I said all that to say, where is your target audience? If I'm selling Joy's Peach Cobbler, my ad shouldn't be at the gym because the typical person at the gym is not looking for Peach Cobbler. Now, does that mean that no one who works out wants Peach Cobbler? I'm not saying that. I'm saying the just of the people at the gym don't need to be eating Peach Cobbler. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't possibly advertise there. Where is your client? Go put yourself there. Where is your client? Go put your product there. Where is your client? Go there personally. Okay. For some reason nowadays, you know, I'm going I'm to I'm start a business, go on Instagram, and it's just going to happen. No, baby. You got to go to them. You in person. So you may have an well, I'm online. Great. Someone in your city and state wants your product. Go be where they are. If I'm selling Joy smoothies, I'm going to be in all the yoga groups. I'm going to be in all the, all the stay-at-home mom groups. I'm going to be, you know, at, in all the PTA groups. I'm going to be uh, uh, advertising around Lululemon. Or where are the people who eat smoothies? Where are they? I'll be at Whole Foods. I'm going to be where they are with my branded polo shirt or my branded hat walking around there. I used to sell... um. Waist trainers, right? I had a weight loss, a weight loss up in the company. I would wear my waist trainer on top of my clothes and everywhere I went, I'm walking down the aisle in Walmart with my waist trainer on. Why? Someone's going to stop me. If you have a product, you should be wearing that product. Don't be a hairstylist and your hair's looking a mess. Don't be a makeup artist and you look the fool. You have, you are a walking advertisement. So I would, everywhere, everywhere I went, I'm wearing something of my product and this face is beat and this hair is laid. Why? Because I'm everywhere I go, the gas station, the grocery store, my son's school, the mall, I'm working. Someone's going to stop me. And when they stop me, I'm going to sell them on whatever it is I'm selling at the time. So I got the waist trainer on. Oh my gosh. That is the coolest waist trainer. Where'd you get it from? Now, I'm not going to say, oh, well, I own a company because why? Now my company looks small. I'm going to say, oh, there's this website. Let me see your phone. I'll put their Instagram name. Oh, my gosh. It's, they have the best website. I love all their products. Here you go. They ain't got to know you the owner. They ain't got to know you the CEO. Why? I would rather I would rather them not know that I own the business. This my business now is the first time I've ever come up in front of a business. I've always been behind the scenes. I've always been in the background besides me practicing law and doing this because I don't I'm not trying to I'm not trying to be in the front. You may not like black people, right? So if you don't like black people, I still want to sell you my product. You don't need to know who I am at all the times, depending on what your product is. So I would pass on my information and I would just, hey, this is, this is a, a company I got this from. If I'm selling it like an office attorney, I told you everywhere I go, I am, I am looking like something. Why? I'm a walking advertisement. For some reason, everybody thinks I do hair. You must be a hairstylist. No, baby, I'm a lawyer. But here's my card back, back in the heyday. Now for all my, for all my little, uh, millennials, Back in the olden days, people walked around with a piece of paper called a business card, okay? Before Instagram, before all this social media was even invented, people had a business card with their name and their logo and their number and their address, and we had to pass out cards. That's how you networked, okay? So I'm in the mall. I'm at Mac. I'm at a restaurant. Oh my God, your hair is so nice. You must do hair. You a hairstylist? No, I'm not, but I'm an attorney. Here's my card. If you or anyone you know need, need an attorney, give me a call. I'm advertising myself. I'm shopping. Oh my God, your sweater is so cute. Oh my gosh, thank you. I'm going to ask them, so you know, are you just here shopping? Are you here? Or do you, what, what do you do? Oh, I don't know. No, no. Oh, okay. Well, I'm an attorney. I'm selling myself. Here's my card. If you or anyone else you know needs an attorney, let me know. Every time you go somewhere, there is people. Are you marketing your business? Or are you just sitting at home on Instagram waiting for them to find your website? You got to go get the people and bring them to you. You got to actually get out your house, look like something, be where they're at, and go bring the people to you.
Now, Fashion Nova gonna send out three emails a day, two text blasts, and be on Instagram all day, every day. Baby, why are you sitting at home waiting for someone to come to your website? If McDonald's gonna do billboards and commercials and Instagram ads, who are you to be sitting at home? If the Kardashians going to have a show, a spinoff show, they're they on Instagram, they're on Snapchat, they're on TikTok, and they're billionaires, who are you to be sitting at home? So marketing to me is probably the, the besides business structure, the biggest hurdle that people, that people run into. They don't understand who their target audience is. You got to market to your target audience. If I am selling, if I am Fashion Nova, right? And Fashion Nova is a little risque, okay? If I'm a boutique and I'm doing all these lace cutout dresses, right? With the booty out and half the titty out, like all, all that's in style now, right? That's not classy, but that's all in style. If that's my boutique, do I need to go take an ad out and all the, and all, and all the church bulletins and advertise to all the first ladies in my city? No. Does that not mean that a first lady may not be a little risque when she goes out of town with her, with her husband, she going to let him have it? She may still be your target audience, but I don't need to market there. You got to know who your target audience is. It's not everybody. You can't market to everybody. Are you high-end? Are you affordable? Are you convenient? Sheen. Baby, you can go ahead and get you a whole wardrobe for $200 with Sheen, right? They are affordable or cheap fashion. Now, if Sheen came out with a $1,000 dress, who's buying a $1,000 dress from Sheen? Nobody. They don't know what their target audience is. So a lot of times you have a great product or a great service, but you don't know how to sell it. If I were to be on Instagram with selfies, I'm taking pictures, this me. Come book a concert. Baby, who... Girl, who's this old lady with these pictures? Y'all gonna be passing right through me. Who, girl, move, move, move. Or boring, boring, boring. But when I come to saying, hey, do you know that you can get, you know, free money for your business by applying for a business grant? Now you're in tune. Why? Because you need money for your business. So now I'm speaking to your pain point. If I'm selling a lip gloss and you got chapped lips and you got eggs on your lips and you know don't nothing work and I say do you do you ever struggle with like that 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 really big crusty buildup on your lips? Oh, I do. Let me tune in. But everybody wants to sell their product with a stock picture, or I'll do a consultation. Well, I mean, I don't want everyone know I know I own this business, or I don't really like to talk. Oh, well, let me ask you this question: Do you like to be at the bank? Oh, you do like to be at the bank. Oh, okay. Well, if you want to be at the bank, the only way you're going to be at the bank is if you come out and talk. Because you ain't got no money. We can't hire no, we will have no advertising budget. You can't hire no influencer. You can't hire no actor, no spokesperson to be in there. So, baby, it's going to be you. To start this bad boy up, it's going to be you. Get you a tripod from Amazon. Put that iPhone on. Put you some lashes on, comb that hair, and go, girl, go go get to the bank. The only way to get to the bank is you talking about the problem. You sell the solution. Do you have body odor? Do you have odor in places that are not just your underarms? In my blah, 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 blah. It's not just the photo of the product. It's not just you doing a selfie looking cute. That's not how you sell something. You got to sell the problem. You are the solution. Sell the pain point. You are the solution. What is your target audience dealing with at night? I have two target audience. I got me my, my, I have a young startup, like my, my little one to five year entrepreneur. But then I got that 10 to 10 to 20 year, that seasoned entrepreneur, that one that I, I know them pain points. I know them pain points. I've lived them. I'm not an, I am not an influencer. Please ignore my Instagram following count. I am not an influencer. I have been building brick and mortar businesses since 2005. Okay? That's what I've done. 
I just stumbled upon this because long story, who cares? I just stumbled upon this. So the pain points I'm speaking to hit home. Have you been sued? My seasoned people, they have been sued before. Have, are, are you faced? Have you heard, ever heard? Have you ever? Have you have you ever thought about having a con, a consultation with a bankruptcy attorney because your business structure wasn't right? Got that ear? You ever had a lawsuit come and you don't want to start a new business because you don't want that creditor to come get that new business? Pain point. You ever got a merchant advance loan and just couldn't keep up on them on them uh, payments and you don't know what to do? Pain point. Speak to the pain point and you are the solution. So if you need help with your marketing, right? How do I get my client to my business? How do I get my client to my um to my website? How do I get my client to me? I'm having a free masterclass this Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern time. I'll be going over business structure, asset protection, um, how to get funding for your business that's not based on credit, and marketing. How to get your client to your website or to your brick and mortar store. If you want the link to my free webinar, if you're on Instagram, type in the word bank and a link will be sent to you. If your page is private, DM me bank and I'll send you the link. If you're on my TikTok page, you want to come to my class, click the first link in my bio for the See You at the Bank Challenge and register a free class 9 p.m. on Monday. If you busy on Monday and can't make it, baby, sell the problem. Figure out what problem you are selling. And when I say a problem, it don't have to be a life or death problem, right? If I'm Joyce Peace Cobble, the problem I'm selling is, baby, I, I provide delicious treats that people don't have to cook at home. That's the problem I'm solving. You ain't got to go out and get the flour and the sugar. Baby, just come on over to Joyce Peace Cobbler and get you some dessert. That's the problem I'm selling. So you want to make sure that you understand what problem you're solving. I mean, we have what problem that you're solving and you sell the pain point, the pain point. If I'm Fashion Nova, baby, do you, it's Valentine's Day. Do you have your Do you have your outfit together? You got your unit together? Do you want a unit for under a hundred dollars? Here, Fashion Nova is always having their model on Instagram walk. They're not doing no. They are not advertising no stock photo. If you got a boutique and the pictures from the neck down, baby, you, you ain't making no money. Why? Because boring. You done got that picture from the vendor. I don't see the. I don't. I don't see the clothes on you. Is it stretchy? Is it fitted? Is my body type like the models? Is she skinny? Is she thick? When she walks in the clothes, is it stiff? Does it have some stretch to it? Is it riding up? If you're just doing neck down stock photos from the vendor, I know you're not making no money because you don't know how to market. You got to sell your product how the person can receive it. And, and with the competition now, if you're just doing photos, there's so many other boutiques that got models walking in it, showing me it how it how it moves, how it flows, and showing, hey, it becomes a white, blue, and red. Which one do you want? Oh, I all three. Let me go get them. So besides selling your problem, you're the solution. You got to be able to compete with the competitors. Now, I'm not saying you got to go have a warehouse as big as Fashion Nova, but I can compete with how I, how, how I show the clothes. I can go put the clothes on. I can go put some makeup on my face and curl my hair, have me a little accessories. I can either be at my house. I can go outside and do a photo shoot at the mall, outside of the park, get a tripod and walk past. I can compete with showing you how good my clothing is if I put the same time and effort into it. It may not be a model. It may be you. <laughs> it may be you, right? And you may not be a model size. Perfect. Because there's more people who are a real size than a size two. So you showing how the clothes look on a real woman. If you notice now, a lot of boutiques, um, especially if you follow, um, if you follow a lot of, I don't, a lot of non-ethnic boutiques, what's in now is they're going to have the same outfit on a size two, on a size eight, 
and on a size like 16. You're going to see a slim person, a medium build person, and our plus size person. They're marketing to all three demographics. So I, I'm, I'm going to show it to you in, 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 in the skinny one. So our slim, our, our slim, our slim chicks and see how it fits on her. If you're a little bit more, you know, curvy, I'm going to show you how it looks on a curvy. And if you are giving us body, I'm going to show you what it's like giving us body. That's how you know a person. So if I'm skinny, I can relate. If I'm, if I'm medium build or curvy, I can relate. And if I'm giving body, I can relate. So I see the clothes, how it'll look on me. So, so if I got a boutique and I'm competing against a girl who got the pit, got the clothes laid out on the ground versus three models, well, who are you buying from? And if you're not buying, who are you gonna send the picture to? Oh, friend, it's your birthday. Look, look at these dresses. So marketing is all about how to capture what your target audience will enjoy. You have to know who your target audience is, and now we know how to market to them. If I'm if I'm the marketing director for Chanel, I'm not saying, hey, let's call Sexy Red in to be our spokesperson because Sexy Red is not the target audience for a person buying a Chanel bag. That's not saying a person who's jamming to Sexy Red won't buy a Chanel bag. That's not that's not Chanel's target audience. So if I go do a whole sexy red campaign, baby, besides burning down the brand, um, I just wasted money. So a lot of y'all are hiring marketing companies. Oh, I'm going to pay them $10,000. Baby, you need to first learn who your target audience is, what they want, how to market to them before you go and hire a marketing company because they don't know who your brand is, who you're talking to, how does your client resonate to understand what you are selling. So if any of this was interesting to you, if any of this made sense to you, if any of this you want to learn more, I have a free masterclass on Monday, this Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Um, if you're on my Instagram page, type in bank in the comments and a link will be sent to you. Um, if, you're, if your page is private, DM me or you can click the first link in my bio. If you're on my TikTok page, hey TikTokers, um, click the link in my bio. I think the first link is going to see is going to be the see at the bank challenge. Um, and let's get our businesses to the bank. That's my goal for this see for this masterclass. How can I help you get your business to the bank? Okay, so I'm about to do my becoming challenge. So on my becoming challenge, people, I have a super guest who's going to get us all the way together. If you have not signed up for my becoming challenge and you're on Instagram. D, uh, comment the word becoming and a link will be sent to you on my TikTokers. I think it's going to be the second link in my bio. And you'll, it, my, my, my becoming challenge will be a Zoom link. I'm having a phenomenal speaker tonight. We're going to talk about healing, getting past, you know, that self-doubt, getting past, you know, some mistakes we made, healing from some choices that maybe, you know, took us out. We just need to kind of get over it so we can kind of get on. So bank for the uh, for the free business masterclass this Monday at 9 p.m. But coming on Instagram for the Becoming Challenge, that's going to be on a Zoom link. I'm about to log off, get my refill, my, my Stanley, get her together so we can get to this class, okay? So everyone have an awesome night, and I will see you at the bank.